All right, welcome to this video. My name is Taylor Benchard, and we are gonna be going over hiring onshore versus hiring offshore, pretty much just building an agency team. How do you do it? What are the pros and cons versus hiring onshore versus hiring offshore? Um, this is gonna be a really important video if you're, if you're at maximum capacity, you're doing eight to $10,000 a month, you can't really handle any more clients. Maybe you're doing 20 or 30 or $40,000 a month, and you just know that if you take on more clients, it ain't gonna happen. It's gonna be mayhem and chaos. Now. I've been there, you've probably been there if you're interested in watching this video. Now the difference between onshore and offshore is pretty simple, I'll explain it for anybody who doesn't really, isn't familiar with that. Onshore is if you're looking to hire somebody who is local in your area or just simply uh, remote but within your country uh, or, or a country that's similar which has a, a, like a higher uh, pay salary. Like if, for example, I, I'm from Canada but I'd be down to hire an account executive in the United States or in the United Kingdom or Canada. I would still consider those countries onshore. Offshore is more like when you're trying to hire somebody who is typically going to be paid between two to five dollars per hour or even like eight dollars per hour because the country that that person lives in is more of a third world country like the Philippines or like India where you can find really smart people but for uh, cheaper rates. So. Let's talk about onshore first. Right now in our, in our agency, we're looking to hire an account executive. If you're interested, feel free to ping me or drop a comment below. Um, but let's talk about onshore. The, typically, these are gonna be people that are problem solvers, they are innovators, they are managers, they are account executives. These are just a few words that could describe somebody who is working onshore in the agency with you. That is this person right here with the little smile looking upwards at those, uh, at those words. And you know the, the, the primary role of an onshore person is, especially in a smaller agency because you know they, like they're going to be wearing a lot of hats. In a smaller agency, when you're doing uh, anything less than $100,000 per month, typically everybody in the agency is wearing a, a few different hats on the onshore team. Now, the primary role, let's go through it, uh, for us in our agency is that these onshore people that are managers, innovators, account executives, they are never doing routine work. There might be one or two small things that they have to do that might come across as routine, but 90% of their time, 95% of their time is spent innovating, problem solving, managing, or talking to clients because they need to talk to clients and maintain the relationships with the clients. Um, it is not spent doing routine deliverables for the clients like launching new campaigns, uh, managing bids, etc. They, they, they won't be doing stuff like that. So never doing routine work. They manage the offshore team. The offshore team does the routine work, which we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, they only do high value tasks. Again, like you're paying these people, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, um, just like starting out. Uh, sometimes even forty, six thousand dollars a year starting out. So it, it, it's it's a decent amount of money, and that can really hurt your margin. So it's like you don't want them doing uh, low value tasks that you could have somebody in the Philippines doing for three to five dollars an hour. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yet most agencies, the reason why they have ten to twenty to twenty five percent margins. Uh, is because they have account executives doing things that are worth three to five dollars per hour and we'll get into that uh, deeper in just a second. Solving major client problems, that's another primary role of the account executive. Obviously they're talking to the client, they are maintaining the client relationship, keeping the client happy, keeping the account in good order. Um, and you know, if there's a major client problem like campaigns go down, products go out of stock, um, you know, just uh, the, the job that was done by the offshore team seems to, it wasn't a good job or something terrible happens, they're gonna solve that problem. That is worth 50 to $100 per hour. Uh, that's a high value task. Um, and then improving and building systems. So the onshore uh, team is also, can, can keep in mind they're innovators and they're problem solvers. So if they notice that a problem keeps happening and recurring and there's a hole in our agency framework, they're gonna patch the hole, they're gonna build a system to patch the hole, they're gonna improve the system. Um, etc. They may even hire people because they see that there's a hole in the system and we need this person to fix that hole, etc. So uh, they are improving and building systems as well. They're not just uh, talking to clients like a typical account executive in most agencies. They will just talk to clients and that's it and make sure the account looks good and that's what an account executive does in a typical agency. Um, and no, that, that, that's not what our account executives are doing. They are doing all of these things. So let's keep going down the list. Uh, closing new clients, that's right, they are also doing sales. So our onshore team is also doing sales. So we have an account executive and um, recently in the last three to six months, 
she has transitioned into also doing lead gen for the agency and closing the clients that she produces from her own lead gen methods. Uh, obviously, we give incentives and commission-based incentives for her to be able to do that. Uh, otherwise, she wouldn't really have much motivation for doing that because if she signs her own client, we give a little bit more incentive on a commission base where she might make 15% of the monthly retainer of that client and about 20% of the setup fee on that client as well. So there's high incentives for her to also do lead gen for the company um, and close new clients. So yeah, I had to teach the account executive, our account executive, how to do sales, uh, how to close people on the phone, how to do audits for prospects that come to our agency and they, they're like, hey, can you check out our, our account? How much would it cost for your services? So I had to, you know, we, I had to train her or him or, or build systems on how that they can do that as well. Um, and they're also doing client calls that we mentioned that they're doing lead gen. I mentioned that and they are building new partnerships. So again, they're part of lead gen and part of sales is getting on the phone with other agencies uh, that are offering similar services to the same niche. So we can potentially partner with them and build referral partnerships with them. And there's a lot of these, these are, this is the primary roles of the onshore team. Now, typically you could just summarize the onshore team as account executives in an agency. Um, depending on the agency, you'll have like maybe account executives, uh, like data analysts, um, and that's typically it. I, I don't like to, to, to branch it out any further than that. Um, but this is the onshore team, and, it, and it's, it's, it's amazing. If, if you really get them to be doing all of this, not only will they be signing new clients for the agency, but they'll also be maintaining between uh, twenty to $30,000 per month uh, in clients. So what does that mean? Well, if you're paying an account executive about $5,000 a month, that account executive for your agency to maintain 50 to 70% margins needs to at least be able to manage and hold like bare minimum $20,000 a month, right? So if you do the math on that, like if one account executive for $5,000 a month can maintain $20,000 per month worth of client revenue, it's about a, it's about a 75% margin, not not including any other expenses. So it's ideal if the account executive, one account executive, can maintain at least 25 to 30 thousand dollars on a 5 thousand dollar monthly uh, monthly salary for for her, whatever that is, or him. Um, and it can even go upwards depending on your systems and how well automated your agency is. But that's the onshore, and that's what they should be doing. Let's dive into the offshore and talk about these people here. So. The offshore team is, they're routine workers. They are deliverable doers and they are phenomenal. They're amazing, you need them. Um, and God bless the, the fact that we have like, you know, uh, different people around the world that get paid different amounts. It really allows you to build an agency that has phenomenal margins. If you leverage these people offshores who don't get paid as much, but relative to their lifestyle, like in the Philippines, it's so cheap to live that the reason why three to five dollars per hour is a standard wage for them is because you know it's 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 cheap to live. So the cost of living is totally different, etc. All that stuff. So they're still getting paid a decent amount, but relative to us in in America or Canada or first world countries, it's it's just it wouldn't be possible. Anyways, they're routine workers. They're deliverable doers. The primary role is to do client deliverables, to follow SOPs, and to generate organic leads. So. Even our offshore team will be doing lead gen. It's it's interesting. It's not like everybody everybody's very flexible. They're they're not like rigid doing one thing, one thing only. They are also doing other things that can help the company grow and not just maintain clients. Um, typically, these VAs are from the Philippines, and uh, that's where we hire a lot of our Philippines. So you can also go find them in India, uh, some other places that most people aren't too familiar with. But you can find really good talent in uh, Poland in Warsaw or different places in Poland. And let's talk about this a little bit more in depth. So what is routine workers, deliverable doers? And I mean, really, it's just pretty much just following SOPs that were built by the onshore team, right? So the onshore team is like the brain. They're like building the engine of the car and just manufacturing it and making sure that the engine goes as fast as possible. And then the, the offshore team is just pretty much just like the fuel in the car uh, to make sure that the engine can keep running. They're, they're keeping the engine running smoothly because if you run out of fuel, it's just like everything's gonna blow up or it's not gonna blow up, but the car's not gonna move. So they are making sure that the clients, uh, the, the quality of work for the clients is good. They're doing all the deliverables, etc. blah, blah, blah. And the onshore team is simply just making sure that the work they do, they're managing them correctly. And if there's any issues in the system, the offshore team isn't really fixing it, the off onshore team is uh, manipulating the system and improving the system. Now, 
This structure, this type of agency framework is not common. You might be watching this and maybe you have a digital agency and you might be thinking, oh yeah, this is what I do. No, it, this is not common. Like I've, I've spoken to about 100 agency owners in the last 60 days because I've recently transitioned to helping agency owners from growing my own agency. I still have the agency. It's kind of growing with the, the, the staff on, on its own without me. But uh, since I've transitioned and I've gotten to speak with a lot of agency owners, I was talking to a guy who's doing a half a million a month. I talked to another agency yesterday doing about $150,000 a month. Both these companies, the one doing a half a million a month has about a 14% margin. The other one doing, uh, the, the other one doing about $150,000 a month has like high teens, mid 20 margin. Okay, that's a typical standard agency margin when you get into the six figures per month mark, when you're doing about $100,000 per month plus, you'll typically see that most agencies are doing somewhere between uh, 15 to 25% margins, maybe 30% margins if they're, if they're really doing good. Um, this sucks and that's my mission with Lead Gen and Enlightened is to just revolutionize the agency world and allow people to scale an agency up to $100,000 per month and still maintain 50 to 70% margins because our agency is one eighth or one tenth the size of this agency doing around a half a million dollars a month. And it's like, we still do similar profit levels to that company. Um, or maybe, yeah, yeah, because like their margin was so low, it's like 14%. So it's, it's, it's like you can have one tenth the revenue but have the same level of profit. And in my opinion, I'll usually take the smaller company that's making the same amount of profit because I don't want to deal with 30 employees just to make the same amount of profit that I would do dealing with three employees, right? Um, so this framework, if you adopt it, where you build the onshore team, the account executives or whoever else, it's primarily just account executives, to build the system, manipulate the system, also became, become sales reps in the company, um, and you keep the offshore team doing the work and the, the, the lower value tasks, basically following the SOPs that were built, you're gonna be able to maintain 50 to 70% margins, okay? Now, the other thing, let's just dive a little bit deeper into this because I think it's important. Uh, a lot of agencies will have like, typically the founders will be closing the calls, right? Typically the founders will be the ones signing the clients and auditing the accounts that come in, doing the pricing, et cetera, all that stuff. When you start growing and you know, it's it's no longer time for you to be doing the deals. Maybe you can hop in and do a big deal once in a while, but if you really want to take your agency to the next level, you want your account executives to become salespeople for your company as well. Not just exclusively, but as well on top of their abilities to maintain clients, etc. You want them to be able to maintain clients and sign new clients because at the end of the day, clients are always going to leave your agency. It's coming no matter what you think. They're not going to stay with you for life. They are going to leave you. Typically in our agency, we'll see that a standard client will stick with us. I think now, well, we've been around for almost three years now, um, and our LTV is, uh, it might be like a year and a half. It might be some, somewhere in there. I think it's about a year and a half, but they're gonna leave at some point. So if the account executives aren't you know, doing something to produce more revenue for the clients that, that are gonna leave, you know, the, then it's like, you're not really, you're almost like at a loss or just staying flat, right? So you want to have them also be doing lead gen. You want to have them learning how to sell, close clients and uh, build relationships. And the reality of this is, is that this is really important because in an agency, it's difficult to balance workload uh, with, with, with onshore teams because in an agency, you, you'll know this really well, like if you sign five or six clients all at once, it's like, oh my God, it's chaos. There's so much work to do. It's like the end of the world, but once you get the clients into that motion, once you get them into like that steady stream where they're getting results, they're happy with your services, and now they're just on the monthly retainer and you're just firing out the automated sequences and the emails and the weekly reports, and you're putting in only one or two hours a week on the account, and they're paying you three to $4,000 a month, and really you're only, your team's only putting in 10 hours a month for that three to 4,000. And that takes a couple months to get there. Sometimes it takes three months, but once you get there, like the account executive does, has all this time, right? And they're like, what am I gonna do with all my time? That's where lead gen comes in because if they know how to do lead gen, if they know how to close clients, if they know how to get on the phone and build relationships to help build partnerships and grow the agency, when they have that free time and there's nothing to do in the business, they can work on the business and transition. That's a really important thing because uh, the, that, that's something I struggled with was like, what am I gonna get these people to do? And then I was like, dude, I'm just gonna get them to do sales, right? So teaching them that is extremely important. And then also for the offshore team, it's the same thing, right? Like 
If you assign a bunch of clients at once, they're gonna have a ton of work, but what happens when all the clients are in, are in a perfect motion and there's no new accounts to set up, there's no new projects, there's new, no new nothing, they need something to do. What are they gonna do with that time? Because they also need to get paid because they're likely on a salary and if you don't pay them and they have nothing to do, they're, not, they're just gonna leave you, but you, don't, you can't have that or else you're not gonna have an agency. That's why we will basically teach them how to generate organic leads. So if they have free time, they can do lead gen. We don't do that with all of our virtual staff, but we got a couple, uh, one that, that does it like all day, pretty much if, if there's no, nothing else to do. So um, yeah, really important offshore, onshore. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Try to make this as simple and um, fast as possible. And also if you're interested in applying for an account executive role, uh, maybe just add me on Facebook, DM me directly or comment something below. Um, and we can check out your resume, see what your qualifications are, what your background is. Again, we're a seven to eight figure Amazon marketing agency. We, we manage stuff uh, for seven to eight figure Amazon sellers. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I put out week, uh, weekly videos every Monday. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for coming on.